Welcome to a code report video. In this video, I'm going to be going over the differences between the four competitive programming contest websites, HackerRank, LeetCode, TopCoder, and Code Forces. So before we get into the 14 features that I'll be comparing across websites, let's talk about what the difference is between these websites at a high level. So I would categorize these websites into two different categories, HackerRank and LeetCode being in a category that I would label geared towards everyone, and TopCoder and Code Forces being being in a category that I would label geared towards pure competitive programming. So what do I mean by this? HackerRank and LeetCode are, at the end of the day, much easier to use for beginners and everyone in general. Uh, if you don't know much about competitive programming and you're just getting started, I would definitely recommend either HackerRank and LeetCode. Furthermore, LeetCode tailors their contests specifically towards preparation for technical interviews. Uh, so you can see right on their front page it says LeetCode is the best platform to help you enhance your skills, expand your knowledge, and prepare for technical interviews. Technical interviews being interviews with technology companies such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, etc. So what exactly does this mean? It means that you're not going to see many questions on topics such as advanced graph theory, advanced dynamic programming, pure mathematics. These types of questions don't lend themselves well to interviews. Uh, in interviews you typically get asked questions that really focus on your knowledge of data structures and algorithms. However, on the websites TopCoder and CodeForces, you're definitely going to see questions on all of these topics, especially in the top division, Division 1. And that's because TopCoder and CodeForces uh, is a website that's typically used when preparing for actual competitive programming contests. So the two big ones are the International Olympiad in Informatics, IOI, and the ACM ICPC, the International Collegiate Programming Contest. So the IOI is for high school students and ICPC is for university students. If you haven't heard of these and you are interested in competitive programming and are enjoying these online coding contests, I would highly recommend looking into these two contests. So let's take a look at the details of the differences between these websites. We're going to be looking at 14 different features, contest frequency, the length in hours, scoring and tie breaks, penalty for failed submissions, hacking, partial points, uh, failed test cases, the website code editors, virtual contests, whether the uh, website has a discussion slash forum during the contest, post contest editorials, divisions, and how long it takes for the website to update their rankings. Our first feature is contest frequency. So LeetCode is the only contest that has an actual schedule that they stick to. They have one contest a week on Saturday evening at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Every other contest, it varies. So I would say for HackerRank, on average, they have a contest once a week. TopCoder is less frequent than that, and Code Forces is more frequent than that. For the length in hours, it varies for HackerRank, uh, but most commonly their contests are either one, to 48 hours or a week long for their week of code. Leak code is always 90 minutes, an hour and a half. Top coder is always 75 minutes for their contest plus a 15 minute, a, a 15 minute challenge phase. And code forces is usually either two hours or two and a half hours. For scoring, HackerRank and LeetCode are the same, and TopCoder and CodeForces are very similar. So note that in HackerRank and LeetCode, the score that you get for each question does not change throughout the contest. Whereas in TopCoder and CodeForces, as time goes on, the question points decays for each question. So the faster you answer it, the more points you'll get. So for HackerRank and LeetCode, your final score is just the summation of all the questions you scored correctly and TopCoder and Code Forces, it's also the summation of all the questions you got correctly, but the score of the question is going to decay from a certain point. So for TopCoder, you have to open a problem. The problems are all initially closed, and that's the point where the score starts decaying. Whereas for Code Forces, as soon as the contest starts, uh, the point value of the question is decaying. If you're interested in how the point value of each question decays for TopCoder and CodeForces, I'll quickly show uh, the details of that for TopCoder. So you can pause here if you're interested and read it. And this is the uh, equivalent statement for CodeForces. For tiebreak, TopCoder and CodeForces don't have any because they have fractional points 
on their scores. But for hacker rank and lead code, because they typically only have uh, four or five questions per contest and they all have the same score, they need a way to uh, break the ties for those that solve the same number of problems. For hacker rank, it's the sum of the per question time, meaning that if you solve the first problem in 10 minutes, the second problem at the 30 minute mark and the third problem at the 40 minute mark, your, your final time would be 10 plus 30 plus 40. Uh, whereas for Lee code, it's just the last time that you submitted a problem at, so it would be 40. For the next three, penalty for failed submissions, hacking, and partial points, these all affect your score as well and sort of can be grouped together. So for penalty for failed submissions, if you submit a solution and it's not correct, hacker rank and top coder don't penalize you, whereas Lee code and court code forces do. So Lee code adds five minutes to your question time and code forces will deduct 50 points from the final score of the problem if you get it correct. Note that if you don't end up successfully solving those problems, you don't get the penalty. For challenge phase slash hacking, uh, only top coder and code forces have this. So as mentioned before, after the 75 minute top coder contest is over, there is a five minute break and then a 50 minute challenge phase where you can submit what you think are examples that will break other people's codes because the, co the code that they submit is only initially tested on a subset of the full system testing. So it's possible that it passed the subset of the system testing, but it could go on to fail the system testing. And if you can identify one of those solutions before the challenge phase is over, you will get 50 points for a successful submission and negative 25 if you try to challenge but fail. And code forces, it works similarly. Similarly, uh, sometimes it happens during the contest, sometimes it happens after the contest, depending on what kind of contest it is. And it's plus 100 for a successful submission and minus 50 for a failed submission. And partial points, the only website with partial points is HackerRank. Uh, that means that they have a set of tests, and if you're only able to solve 50% of them, you can get 50% of the score of that problem. The next feature is gives failed test cases, which means if you submit your code and it fails, does the contest give you the test case that failed your code? And the only website that does that is Lead Code. Moving on to website code editor, every website has a built-in code editor except for code forces, which makes code forces a lot more difficult to use, which means you have to use your own IDE or Notepad++ and compile your code and test your code outside of the website. And then when you finally think you have a correct solution, you have to submit the uh, .cpp file or whatever language that you're using. So we can take a look at the code editors for the other three websites. Hacker Ranks is really nice. It gives you a lot of uh, code to begin with. So usually any of the code that's needed to input the information uh, that the problem is giving you. And then sometimes it'll even give you a function uh, that has the input in uh, structures, data structures and variables already and you just need to implement that function. Leak code is very similar except there's a lot less boilerplate code because they just straight up give you the function and the data that, and the input that you need to solve that function. Topcoder, I would say, has the uh, poorest of the interfaces. You can see here that they give you both the problem statement and the coding area. They give you no code to start, so you have to write a class and a function and uh, you can click this little button here to split the screen or if you want to maximize the problem statement or the coding screen. Uh, but I find that if you try to zoom in, sometimes the buttons will go missing and it's a little bit difficult to use. So definitely not as good as LeetCode and HackerRank's interfaces. And I'm gonna go over the last five features pretty quickly because not much needs to be said about them. For virtual contests, LeetCode and Code Forces give you the ability to do contests in the past. It won't count towards your rankings, but you can still do them in contest mode. If you go to the corresponding websites and click on the contest links, you can see that you have two buttons uh, on Code Forces and LeetCode that both uh, enable you to virtually participate. 
For the discussion slash forum during the contest, the only website that has this is HackerRank, and that's for clarifying uh, confusion in the problem statement if you're having trouble understanding what the problem is. Uh, TopCoder will also give you announcements, and so will Code Forces if there needs to be some uh, ambiguity, uh, you know, clarified. Uh, but you need to wait for the administrator uh, to send this, whereas HackerRank, someone might have already posted it. For post-contest editorials, HackerRank officially releases their own solution and LeetCode has a really nice discussion forum where other users will post their own solutions. And for TopCoder and CodeForces, they don't have official editorials, but a lot of users will post blogs with the solutions to the problem. So that's why it says usually for them. So we can take a look at HackerRank and LeetCode's uh, sort of editorials and discussion. So for LeetCode, they give you a tab called Discuss and you can see all the upvoted solutions and I really like this because it shows you uh, different approaches to solve the problem. Um, so sometimes you'll have a problem where you can do it using dynamic programming, you can do it using a breadth first search and you'll be able to find all those different solutions in the discussion forum. For HackerRank, they'll release an editorial. In this solution, it was really nice. They uh, released the n squared, n log n, and linear solutions. But sometimes they're only showing one approach when there are multiple approaches. For divisions, the only two websites that have multiple divisions are TopCoder and CodeForces. Division 1 is the top division, and Division 2 is the lower division. Once you start ranking high enough in the lower division, you can move up to Division 1. And finally, ranking update. Uh, for each contest, HackerRank and LeetCode, it typically takes two to four days. For HackerRank, it's really dependent on the number of people that competed in the contest. Uh, so if you have only a couple thousand, it's usually faster, but if you have 10,000 plus, it's going to be longer. Leak code, I haven't really been able to find a pattern because typically there's the same number of com competitors in each contest, but sometimes uh, the ranking will be up by Sunday night or Monday morning, and sometimes it'll take till Wednesday or Thursday. And top coder is super fast. It usually happens within minutes of the system testing being done, and code forces is usually really fast as well, although there has been delays from time to time. That concludes the comparison. You can find the links for all four of the websites, the IOI and ICPC contests, and the detailed description for the point erosion on Code Forces and Top Coder in the description down below. And if I have missed any glaring differences between these websites, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.